Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. However, this Eucharist is not ordinary at all. Within the service, we are going to baptize Ayana, uh, and also the Holy Mass is being offered for all the members of St. Augustine's and for a special intention too for the in intention of Daniel and Esperanza, for the many plenteous gifts of God, God's inspiration in their life, and all the gifts which they have experienced recently. In order to celebrate the gift of our salvation, let us call to mind our sins. We bring before the good Lord all the missed opportunities of compassion and charity. We recall those moments when we hurt someone by thought, word, or deed, or through a negative feeling, and we ask for sorry. We ask for sorry if we ignored someone in our past week whom we could have visited either in person or via a telephone. But let us bring before the good Lord all the gifts which all of us have been enjoying regardless of age. So we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Who is sent to heal the contrite of heart? Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Christe. at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my people the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle, he built a tower. He dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done to my, for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes, but it, but did it, yield, did, but it yield sour grapes instead. Very well, I will tell you, what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on and knock down its walls for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to drain, to drain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed. Integrity, but only a cry of distress. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a, vi a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations, it stretched out its branches to the sea, to the great river it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the bark of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn against me in plow. Look down from heaven and see. This is this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us light that we may fall upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. 
and that peace of God, which is so much greater than you can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honor, and everything that can be taught virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learned from me and have, and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next, he sent some more servants, this time a large number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then, that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
Dear brothers and sisters, in the Jewish calendar, right these days, there is a feast, the Feast of the Tabernacles. It's a powerful symbol, and I'd like us to think about it as a symbol of baptism. It's called the Feast of the Tabernacles or the Tents, but these are special tents, um, as we uh, read it in the book of Nehemiah in chapter 8, from verse 14 to 18, those who returned from the exile, they remembered how gracious God was with them on their journey. Originally, Moses ordered this feast to remember uh, the liberation from Egypt, but those who were uh, brought to captivity when they returned, they remembered God's good grace. Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booths, as it is written. And all the assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and lived in the booths. The tent, or the Sukkot, is a special tent. It's, we wouldn't make too much use of it in, uh, in this rainy weather. It's made of branches, deliberately, you can see through the branches, you can see either the skies, the starlit sky, or the clouds which are pouring down rain. This Jewish feast is celebrated not in the actual time of the Exodus at springtime, when spring comes with warm wind and the sun is promising the beauty of summer but it is celebrated when cold winds begin to blow, like today, and drizzling rains sudden in the autumn. The birth and bringing up of a child is the fruit of their parents' hard work. In a sense, your child is that little, beautiful, fragile tent made of your efforts. Baptizing a child is a reminder that it is an ongoing journey. In a sense, baptism is a reminder of the fact that life is fragile, like that tent. It needs support, extra care. In Christian baptism, in Iona's baptism, we confess that we need God's help. Today we are standing in front of God like the Jews stood when they built their fragile tents. This feast, as I mentioned, falls on the autumn. To dwell in booths in the spring was no trial of their belief in providence. The weather was nice, there were parties all around, people could have enjoyed their stay in the tent. To do so at the approach of winter is to proclaim to the world that the chosen people were prepared to face hardship for their covenant with God. The Bible does not give a detailed direction for the building of the tent. Neither does it define what constitutes dwelling in that Friend. It is a bit like with parenting and baptism, the covenantal journey of the parents itself. The actual erection of the booth was an adventure in which young and old used to participate in enthusiasm, surrounding themselves with life's necessities in this imperfect temporary abode, the Jews were further reminded of their uncertain lease of life and of the need at all times to cast their eyes heavenward, to cast their eyes heavenward. They relived the experiences of their ancestors, how joyful it was to be liberated by God 
and return to the promised land. They remembered the sufferings and hardships of their forefathers, but they gave wholeheartedly thanks for their liberation and God's grace. Dear brothers and sisters, baptism within the liturgy shows us being in a similar position. We know that God will richly bless this child and her family, but we have to be ready to work for the child's future. There will be hardships in this new Christian life, but we know that God will give, can give, her a safe arrival to the full joy of Christian faith. But until then, parents, godparents, relatives, and members of our congregation will be the child's tent builders. We are reminded by our symbol, the tent, of which branches the stars of the sky or the rainy clothes can be seen. We have to be aware that keeping the Christian faith alive is a laborious work. It's a toiling journey. Setting an example to remain faithful to our baptismal vows, saying no to the works of Satan, saying a full yes to God's goodness and the godly way of life, it is a hard toiling. Dear Talisa, Maxwell, Quezanho, Sabrin, Edwina, Daniela, and Adani. We are reminded of this laborious journey. But we also know that during our joint journey with the child, we shall be enjoying heavenly protection. So for us Christians, the Feast of Baptism is our Feast of the Tabernacles. We are reminded of the hardships and the moments of being lost on this journey. But this child's feast, the symbols of the fulfillment of faith, like the anointing with the oil of the catechumens, with the oil of the prism and the candle of faith which we are going to lit, also remind us that we anticipate our ultimate happiness with God, which we shall enjoy in our final abode, in the most safe tent, in the house of love, heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, there is a further and last symbol of the tent of the Feast of the Tabernacles. It has another important symbol, the building materials and the fruits used in the feast itself. The four plants used in the feast. The golden citrus and the tall palm branch decked with sprigs of flowering myrtle and graceful willow these four species mentioned in Levit Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40, they represent different types of persons, each with his or her own virtues and shortcomings. And these all combine, these all symbolize in one, symbolize one common effort to serve God and bring us up this child in a godly way. Thus, the ethrog, a fruit both pleasant in appearance and in fragrance, typifies comeliness, fragrance of reputation and fruitful activity. The willow, those who lack both beauty and fragrance, who produce no fruit easily. So how honest this feast is, it also shows our shortcomings. The myrtle used in the tent, in building the tent, 
which is fragrant and comely in appearance, but bears no fruit, resembles the pious who are not productive. While the lulav, possessor of safety, height, and fruit bearing even in the desert, typifies those who have endurance, dignity, and goodwill, and give of their best in thought and action. This is what happens through Ayana's life journey. This is what happens in our own lives. We practice our virtues and we fall and we experience our shortcomings. But the whole person is put in the service of God. The baptism which we celebrate today and the work of support to the newly baptized are similarly reminders of Christian virtues. The plants in the tent symbolize virtue. Virtues. The ethrobe resembles the heart. Both must be flawless. The willow is shaped like a mouth, as the former drinks of the water by the side of which it grows. So must it drink at the perennial fountain of the Bible. The myrtle, cast in the shape of the human eye, bids us be pleasant in character, while the lula, fashioned like a spinal cord, is a sermon in uprightness. But back to our Christian symbols. The baptism which we celebrate today is a similar reminder of our Christian virtues. Starting with the theological virtues, faith, hope, and the love of God, as it comes, as they come purely from God. So let our task be to think about those virtues of ours, our human virtues, which all of us must practice in order that this child might arrive to a fully adult Christian faith and that we ourselves might arrive to our final abode, which God has prepared for us. So let the building blocks of Ayana's journey be these virtues, temperance, humanity, charity, benevolence, generosity, sacrifice, diligence, patience, kindness, humanitas, satisfaction with life, compassion, and humility. Amen. Actual baptism is taking place just in half a minute.
in the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray. We heard today of God's love for his people. Now we are not just God's people, but his family invited to give love for love. Let us pray. We, we heard today of God's love for his people. Now we are not just God's people, but his family, invited to give love for love. We pray for our little Esther, that God by her was not wasted and produced something so great. We pray to start again and to produce the fruit of love and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our Savior was built up the vineyard again. He is the vine and we are the branches. May we stay close to him that his power and strength may pass through us to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, St. Paul today tells us no need to worry, but if there is anything we need, to pray for it. Asking God with prayer and thanksgiving, we pray now as he tells us to. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Paul says to ask with prayer and thanksgiving. We thank God for so many prayers answered in the past, which we have forgiven. To thank God for his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Iona's family, for the godparents, relatives, and friends. May the good Lord keep them healthy and safe, and give them support in bringing up their child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also pray for Daniel and Esperanza, who are giving thanks for the gifts of God in their lives. May the good give them good health, growth in friendship and fellowship with their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now in silence, let us bring our own needs before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept, accept these gifts for the, the sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this vine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and God. It is our duty and our joy to, to thank and praise you, Father of mercies, because when the gift of your grace was rejected by your creation people. You offered it to your chosen people, and when it was rejected by your chosen people, you offered it once more in your Son. When your Son was rejected and crucified, you did not come in wrath, but came in the power of your Holy Spirit to spread the good news of restoration, reconciliation and resurrection, beginning in Jerusalem and unto the hands of your earth. And so we stand before you, not in fear of your judgment, but rejoicing in your abundant mercy, joining with angels and archangels and the company of heaven, to sing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You give us so much gracious God, but everything we have is loss compared to the wondrous love we see in your Son, Jesus Christ. On your Son's last night with his disciples, he took away everything you gave us in him, and yet you gave us a meal. Now this wonderful sacrament we give you, in this wonderful sacrament, we give you everything we know how to give you, praying 
that you will give us Christ in the form of this meal. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us now, that we might become the body of Christ that you give us to eat. Give us your very self in these gifts of bread and wine, and make them for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God, the Alpha and the Omega, you are the wisdom from which we come and you are the destiny to which we are going. You abide among us, between us and within us. Where your servants are rejected, sustain them. Where your messengers are beaten, renew them. When your children are cast out, give them hope of justice and vindication. Where your vineyard is in the hands of the headstrong tenants, bring your liberation, bring your transformation, Bring your righteousness until the day comes when we and your suffering people see you face to face, ever one God. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, the chief bishop, the pope, and Jonathan, our bishop, with the area bishop, Robert, and all the clergy. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be free. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. The body of Christ.
There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one Father, God of all. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before the blessing, may I wish you a very joyful, very special Sunday afternoon on the day of the baptism of your child. It has uh, brought us great joy, and uh, please be assured of the support of our community's prayers. And also, Daniel and Esperanza, uh, special prayers for you for this coming week on behalf of the community. May the good Lord bless the work of both of you, our youth work, and all your encounters in life. And for the youth, as the academic new academic year just began, we wish you very good progress in your studies. Sometimes when it's the most boring, that's the most important part of schooling, just put an extra effort in it, because through schooling, we can achieve what God has as a dream about us. So we are wishing you a very fruitful academic year and good friends and also fun together in school. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. You have your mission. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.